Hi, this is John Linnebal, and this is How to Study for the SAT and ACT, the third SAT essay done in real time. This is the third official SAT essay that I'm doing in real time. This is John Linnebal, as I said, I'm with John Linnebal Tutoring, and if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button, and please, please, please subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost you anything and will still help me bring you more videos like this one. So let's move on. Ethos, pathos, and logos. Ethos is an appeal to ethics, facts, character, or authority. The ethics derives from this Greek word, which means character. Pathos means an appeal to emotions. Think pathetic. Logos means logic, rationality, deductive, or inductive logic. Don't worry. If you haven't seen these terms, you can learn them now. Even if you have a panic attack and can't recall these words on the test, just use the words the SAT people give you, such as logical arguments, powerful word choice, etc. Just describe what you read in the essay and you will be fine. It's better to use more sophisticated diction, that is SAT or in quotes college vocabulary words, but only if you know what they mean. A simple word used correctly is much better than a fancy one used incorrectly. Your job is to analyze, not to argue. No matter what the essay slash article slash editorial is about, you will always be asked to analyze the way the author uses ethos, pathos, and logos to make his or her point. Do not discuss your personal feelings on the matter discussed in the essay. They didn't ask you to respond to the argument just to analyze it. However, if you see an obvious logical fallacy, sketchy factual support, or obvious attempts to gloss over important counterarguments with dismissive or distracting language, or that the argument is simply ignored, you can and should mention it along with the things the author does well. Can be a little passive aggressive. The author skillfully argues around an important counterargument that many readers might miss. Um, you know, I would give you some points for that if I were a grader. The instructions do not change, just as none of the other instructions on the SAT or ACT ever change without a great deal of advance notice. So just memorize them now. The exact instructions are as follows. I got this one from the first official SAT practice test, which you can download online at. Here's the URL. This is where I got all the SAT practice tests. You can too. They're free. As you read the passage below, consider how Jimmy Carter uses evidence such as facts or examples to support claims, reasoning to develop ideas and to connect claims and evidence, stylistic or persuasive elements such as word choice or appeals to emotion to add power to the ideas expressed. Obviously, your essay will not be something written by Jimmy Carter. It's going to be a different essay, but it will be exactly the same way. Here are the instructions from the College Board at the end of the essay. There's a little box at the end of the essay. Write an essay in which you explain how Jimmy Carter builds an argument to persuade his audience that the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge should not be developed for industry. In your essay, analyze how Carter uses one or more of the features listed in the box above or features of your own choice to strengthen the logic and persuasiveness of his argument. Be sure that your analysis focuses on the most relevant features of the passage. Your essay should not explain whether you agree with Carter's claims, but rather explain how Carter builds an argument to persuade his audience. Notice that the instructions say exactly what I told you they would. And also notice that they tell you what the point of the essay is. In this case, that the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge should not be developed for industry. You don't even have to find it for yourself, and you don't even have to rephrase it. You can just plug it right in. You can mention different elements than the ones listed, but you don't have to do that. Unless they immediately spring to mind, don't bother to search for them. Just be a sheep and use the ones the College Board has listed. These essay graders have to read lots and lots of essays in a very short time, so they're just going to tick off boxes, go, yep, 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 okay, mention this, great. If you write something that's way different, they're going to have to spend more time, they might think it's creative, but also they're going to notice mistakes that you make much, much more rapidly. Yeah, they're going to stick out a lot more than they would if you were just being a sheep. Believe me, I know this from grading essays for test prep companies, things like that. Okay. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to open the essay from practice test number two, which I haven't seen before as far as I recall. I'm going to do everything within the 50 minutes that you'll get. 
Unlike you, unless you have a special accommodation, I will be doing this on a computer, but I couldn't do this well if I actually wrote it. My handwriting is awful. I'd have to take pictures of it, etc. And I plan to do this by breaking it down into ethos, pathos, and logos sections, rather than analyzing each paragraph of the essay individually, as I did in my first SAT done in real-time video. The essay I do will end up on my blog at the website at www.johnlinnebald.com. All right. Let's get started. Here's SAT Practice 2 essay, and boom. Okay, so SAT Practice, essay number two. The essay gives you an opportunity to show how effectively you can read and comprehend a passage. Okay, so why am I reading this? I just told you not to do that. Dope. Okay, so it is 6.50 p.m., so I will have until 7.40 p.m. to finish this. Okay, consider how Martin Luther King Jr. uses, excuse me, uses evidence such as facts or examples to support claims, reasoning to develop ideas, and, okay, connect claims and evidence, stylistic or persuasive evidence such as word choice, or appeals to emotion to add power to the ideas expressed. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is bring up good old Microsoft Word... And here we go. Da, da, da. All right. So here we go. And we will make this like so. And so since I'm a preacher by calling, it is not a surprise that I have major reasons for bringing Vietnam into my field of moral visit, vision. <laughs> There is at the outset a very obvious and almost facile connection between the war in Vietnam and the struggle I and others have been waging in America. A few years ago, there was a shining moment in that struggle. It seemed as if there was a real promise of hope for the poor. Through the poverty program, there were experiments, hopes, new beginning. Then, the, okay. So... <laughs> Then the build-up came to Vietnam, and I watched this program broken and eviscerated as if it were some idle political plaything of a society gone mad on war. And I knew that America would never invest in necessary funds or energies in real pages as long as adventures like Vietnam continue to draw men and skills and money like some demonic destructive suction tube. So I was increasingly compelled to see the war as an enemy of the poor and attack it as such. Okay. Um, so... First thing we should do is let's draft a generic introduction. So if we're going to do the introduction, okay. So first of all, we'll have in the speech beyond Vietnam. Not time to break silence. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. makes a compelling case for. Now let's see what he's making the case for. Okay, obviously, probably withdrawal from Vietnam and, okay, that the American involvement in the Vietnam War is unjust. Okay. For the proposition that the United States involvement in the Vietnam War Okay, war is unjust using, okay, ethos, facts, and commonly accepted propositions, and commonly accepted values. or ethics nah, I don't have to put it, okay. or ethics 
Okay. Pathos appeals to emotion through powerful descriptive language and logos logic. Dr. King's speech makes a powerful moral argument for U.S. withdrawal from Vietnam and a renewed American commitment. Oops to the war on poverty in the U.S. itself. Okay, the first element with which Dr. Reverend King Strikes the reader is pathos. <coughs> In the first paragraph, King refers to is being a preacher by calling which in addition to giving him some moral authority or ethos brings the reader into a frame of mind where he or she can contemplate ethics good and evil da, da, da. king then describes the <coughs> A poverty program commonly referred to as the war on poverty as a shining moment in the in that struggle namely the battle for civil rights for African Americans and other minorities in the US. Okay. He references okay experiments, hopes, and new beginnings. All of which have positive connotations. 
especially when placed together. This happy juxtaposition of positive terms, however, immediately with King's next statement. Even without more, that <clears throat> is immediately is immediately that statement say immediately brings to mind negative connotations. The Vietnam War was the first U.S. war where images of death and destruction including the deaths of U.S. troops It's true. Um, <clears throat> King then mentions that the war caused Okay, broken and eviscerated as if it were some idle, not idly, sorry, idle political plaything of a society gone mad on war. All right. Obviously, the image of U.S. of American society as some kind of <clears throat> psychopathic child destroying important social programs in order to pursue It's new unwanted plaything. to pursue its new play a 
war is incredibly powerful emotional language. <coughs> Eviscerated. Literally means having means well means a person or being internal organs or viscera being torn out. Okay. King mentions that the war on poverty could not be fought effectively if <clears throat> men and skills were drawn into adventures like Vietnam like some demonic destructive suction tube King then concludes that the Vietnam War is him to attack it as such. <clears throat> In the second paragraph, King notes that the Vietnam War was okay, not only Stating the uh, stating the, the poor at home, but sending their sons and brothers to die in. high proportions relative to the rest of the population. He also cites the irony, the Okay, I can't type today. The cruel irony. Okay. Of watching. Okay. Of watching black young men. Fight to liberties
which they in America. He succinctly sums up the sadly ironic situation by okay by stating da, da, da. okay we have you can put the w in brackets here when you're going to start with you're not going to start with the beginning of the original sentence so instead of and so just we have been repeatedly faced with the cruel irony of watching Negro and white boys uh, on TV screens as they kill and die together for a nation that has been unable to seat them together in the same schools. You bet. Unable to seat them in the same schools. Cruel irony of got it done. Okay, so we watch him in Brutal burning the huts of a poor village. They hardly live on the same block of Chicago. King, um, okay. King cites to similar segregation in housing to make and to emphasize his point. Justice, yeah. and cruel irony, and hypocrisy. him to the conclusion I could not be silent in the face of such cruel manipulation of the poor okay King's citation to the facts of school and housing 
segregation and the fact that these things are wrong and hypocritical in a free society are splendid examples of the effective use of ethos in a speech. Third paragraph, King describes his efforts to encourage African Americans to shun violence, shun violent protests, stating that, stating, I have told them that Molotov cocktails and rifles would not solve their problems while facing the counter argument that the US government itself was using violence to solve its problems in Vietnam. Okay. States I knew I could never again raise my voice violence of the oppressed For example, that's what EG means, African Americans. Without having first spoken clearly to the greatest purveyor of violence today. Okay in the world today, my own government. For the sake of those boys, for the sake of this government hundreds of thousands
king uses his uses his moral authority as a non violent preacher and advocate of non violence to address why he feels the need to address violence on the global scale such as war and not just violence in the US. His use of repetition with the repeated phrase for the sake of emphasizes his belief that non-violence is the solution and only salvation of the poor of minorities and of the government of the US government and the people of Vietnam Okay. So then, da da da. King uses this emotional argument layered upon the ethos of common. Christian well, morality to lead into the fourth paragraph where he answers the question aren't you a civil rights leader with his stated mission to save the soul of America. Oh, 
the corrupt use of unjust violence in any form against any person or group. forcefully compares the U.S. to a corpse, well, to a human body, let's say the U.S. government and society to a human body. Dating totally poisoned like a dead, like the corpse of a poisoning victim. You can put that in brackets. The, okay, part of the autopsy must read Vietnam. It seems like there should be quotes there, but there aren't the original, so, okay. It can never be saved so long as it destroys the deepest hopes of men the world over. impulses must head down the path of protest and dissent working for the health of our land. King thus compares the struggle for civil rights to the to a journey down a strenuous and demanding hiking path those who 
wish to work for justice must work for the health of our land by struggling against the injustice created by the powerful in the U.S. government not only against African Americans in the U.S. but against Vietnamese nationals in Vietnam. King's use of ethos is detailed above in that he cites to the fact of Vietnam being broadcast on television every night. scenes segregation King's use of logos is very simple Those King also relies on the obvious ideas that unjust death, torture, poverty, and social segregation. based on race are wrong. Since he relies on the basic notions that no one deserves to suffer based upon his or her race. Mm. Let's see. For no other reason than his or her race, it makes no sense to fight for racial equality for one group but not another the Vietnamese black 
Americans, but not another. Okay, da -da 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 -da. irony, black soldiers. Da -da -da -da. We'll put in a little more at those. King also cites to the obvious fact that money spent on warfare cannot also be cannot be spent on on social programs. Okay, since the Vietnam War not only oppressed the Vietnamese, but drew much needed money away from social programs intended to help the poor and minorities. In the U.S., King's inexorable logic leads him to Pose the Vietnam War. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's speech uses ethos in the form of commonly accepted Christian, Judeo-Christian morality pathos in the vibrant description of racial injustice and intolerable violence and logos in the form of the compelling conclusion that any civil rights move and must aim for peace and justice for all people worldwide, not just some in the U.S. It is a classic example of a persuasive moral argument against war and for racial justice, racial and civil justice. And there we go. All right. Da, da, da. Okay, we can take out this extra space here. And we're still not at the 50 minutes. Okay, so here we go. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll probably go work out at the gym and then I'll put this up in a little bit. Talk to you later. 
All right, I hope this helped. Please comment below if you have suggestions, criticism, or praise for me. Please like and subscribe to this channel. Um, I also have a mirror channel in case something happens to this channel. Either way, uh, please like and subscribe to this channel. It's the best way to help me out and get more videos like this. I can be hired for online tutoring or in-person tutoring in the San Francisco Bay Area or other places if I'm traveling there. And thank you so much for watching this. Have a good day.